What's going on bottom line viewers? It's Dylan back for another video. I apologize. I have not made a fully edited one in a minute. That is my fault. I've been busy with school and then I also had a little bit of a camping vacation this past weekend so I haven't been able to make any videos. But I'm here for an NFL draft related video. Of course the NFL draft for this year is going to be taking place on Thursday. It'll be a lot of fun. Should be some interesting things about this class in particular but there's always a lot of history to the NFL draft every single year and I want to focus on the 2000 NFL draft go back to the year 2000 we were seeing Tom Brady formerly the quarterback of the University of Michigan drafted in the 199th pick in the draft the sixth round which is very crazy considering the career that Tom Brady had but what's even more crazy is that so many teams decided not to pick him up and there were six quarterbacks in total picked before Tom Brady in the 2000 NFL Draft. So I wanted to go back and see the career statistics of each six of these gentlemen. Were they at least decent in their careers? They gave some success? Were they anything in the NFL? I mean, of course, hindsight is 50-50. So I'm not going to blame these teams too much for not picking Tom Brady. But it really sucks that... They weren't able to pick him up, considering they had a lot of chances to do so. So let's look at each six of their quarterbacks' careers and see how they fared. The first quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL draft was Chad Pennington coming out of Marshall, which really highlights the lack of depth in this quarterback class. But he was drafted in the first round in the 18th pick by the New York Jets, had 81 starts, which resulted in a 44-37 and career record. 66% completion percentage, 17,823 passing yards, 102 touchdowns to 64 interceptions, and a 2-4 and four career playoff record. Chad Pennington is one of the two guys on this list to have a respectable NFL career. He did something for the Jets. He gave them a little bit of hope. You know, they contended within those years in the mid-2000s, had a over 500 career winning record, which is decent. Obviously, you want to have that for your quarterback. And made the Jets somewhat of contenders, you know, wild card status. He was a, a kind of a fan favorite, honestly. He was a guy that a lot of people remembered in the mid-2000s as just one of those nice guys that played a decent career in the NFL. This one kind of hurts, though, because the Jets are in the same division as the Patriots, and things could be drastically different if they had drafted Tom Brady in this draft. Now, were they going to draft him in the first round? Absolutely not. He was still drafted in the sixth round. But having Chad Pennington in this same class, it really kind of hurts. But still had a decent career and one of the two guys on this list that I could still pass off as okay. I'm not mad they didn't take Tom Brady here. The second quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL draft was Giovanni Carmazzi from Hofstra. This was my favorite one on this entire list. He was drafted in the third round with the 65th overall pick, or the first pick in the third round, by the San Francisco 49ers. Now, the story of Carmazzi is actually very interesting because he never played in the NFL. Nope. He played two seasons in the 49ers practice squad, but he never played an NFL game in his entire career. And after his two seasons with the 49ers practice squad, left and is currently, get ready for this, a yoga goat farmer. Anybody want to explain to me what a yoga goat farmer is? Because I have no idea what that is. But yes, the 49ers decided to pick Karmazi, who is now a yoga goat farmer, and let's be perfectly frank, not in the NFL anymore, versus the guy that's won five Super Bowls in the NFL. And this hurts even more considering Brady was a huge 49ers fan. Yikes. Uh, the 49ers, have they won a Super Bowl since Tom Brady's been in the NFL? Nope. They competed in one but they have not won one. So this one really hurts considering the history with Brady and the 49ers before he was drafted and the fact that Carmazzi never even played in the NFL. That, that's just a great story, yoga goat farmer. <laughs> the third quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL draft was Chris Redman from Louisville. He was drafted in the third round with the 75th pick by the Baltimore Ravens, had 12 career starts, which resulted in a 4-8 and eight record, a 57.2 career completion percentage, 3,179 passing yards, 21 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, and has probably the biggest career highlight out of anybody on this entire list. He does have a Super Bowl ring. Yes, it was as a backup in his rookie year with the Baltimore Ravens, but he does have a Super Bowl ring. So congratulations to Redman for accomplishing something that nobody else on this entire list was even close to getting. Now, Redman was not a good quarterback. He was a very unspectacular quarterback, very ordinary, was a backup most of his career, did not do much, and his biggest career highlights 
were mostly with the Falcons, which is not even the team that drafted him. But this picture with Brady is a nice consolation prize. I find it to be hilarious, by the way. It's just not a very great career. He does have a Super Bowl ring, so he can hang his hat on that. But the fact that the Ravens didn't even go for somebody like Brady in this situation, I don't know. It just it baffles me. And they kind of lost out on that. So congrats, Ravens. You did great. The fourth quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL draft was T. Martin coming out of Tennessee. This is a great story, too. Watch this. He was drafted in the fifth round with the 163rd pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had exactly zero starts in his NFL career, had a 37.5 completion percentage, zero touchdowns, one interception, though. And get this. This is my favorite stat of all. He only threw 16 passes in his NFL career. 16 Versus the guy that has five Super Bowls and multiple MVPs. I get it. The Steelers were not expecting Tom Brady to be the greatest of all time. And like I said, hindsight is 50-50 in this situation. But this is hilarious. They drafted a guy around before Tom Brady who exactly started zero times in his career. Didn't even throw a touchdown. In fact, the only stat on this entire list was that one interception. His career completion percentage is atrocious. And like I said, 16 passes. 16 is his entire career. The Steelers could have had Tom Brady, but they got T. Martin. Hilarious. The fifth quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL draft was Mark Bolger coming out of West Virginia. He was drafted in the sixth round with a 168th pick by the New Orleans Saints, had 95 career starts, which resulted in a 41-54 and record, a 62.1 career completion percentage, 22,814 yards, 122 touchdowns to 93 interceptions, a 1-2 and two playoff record, a second consolation considering that Chris Renneron has a Super Bowl ring, he was a 2004 Pro Bowl MVP, woo, and the Rams quarterback for most of the mid-2000s. Now, Mark Bolger is the only other quarterback on this entire list to have a pretty decent NFL career. Like I said, 95 starts, that's pretty good, that's actually the most out of anybody on this entire list. He has the most yards the most touchdowns, a decent completion percentage. He won a playoff game. He was a Pro Bowl MVP. So in terms of stats, he had a decent NFL career. But the reason he took over that job for the Rams was because Kurt Warner was not very good in the mid-2000s. He had to get his career renaissance back in Arizona. But here, he just was a decent quarterback that wasn't going to be doing much. And the one time that they had an opportunity to really thrive was when they lost the double overtime to the eventual NFC champion Carolina Panthers in the 2004 playoffs. So Mark Bolger had that one opportunity and then got the money and ran. That's basically what Mark Bolger's NFL career is. Decent, but could have still had Brady. Let's end this list off by doing what we always love to do, make fun of the Browns. The sixth quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL draft was Spurgeon Wynn coming out of Texas State. He was drafted with the 183rd overall pick by the Cleveland Browns, had three career starts, which resulted in an 0-3 record, congratulations, a 46.1 completion percentage, 589 total passing yards, one touchdown, and an abysmal seven interceptions. Spurgeon Wynn did basically nothing in his NFL career. Like I said, three starts, didn't win a single game, and threw seven interceptions and only had one touchdown. Sucks. He kind of fiddled around in the CFL for a little bit, but then ultimately retired after a couple of years because he just wasn't doing any well. And, yeah, the Browns picked this guy. 16 picks before Tom Brady was picked by the New England Patriots. This one's got to hurt the most, considering it was the closest to Tom Brady, and it's the Browns. Lol. That's all it always works, I guess. But Spurgeon win. Last quarterback taken before Tom Brady did absolutely nothing. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video talking about the six quarterbacks taken before Tom Brady in the 2000 NFL draft. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. Comment below. Do you want to see me talk about more NFL history? I love going back in time to see some of the greatest, you know, games in NFL history, some of the greatest players, what ifs, scenarios. I love making those kind of videos. So if you guys want to see me make more of those in the future, comment below, give me some topic ideas. In terms of availability, I am sorry that I wasn't here last week for the most part, except for that Des Bryant video that was kind of breaking news. Um, it's just that school has been taking up a lot of my time. We're in the couple last couple of weeks of the semester, so I'm trying to finish that up. And work is taking a lot of my time too. So in two and a half weeks, 
I will be done, and I'll be a lot more free to make some more great content. We are starting the wrestling channel back up, or the wrestling content, of course, with the Greatest Royal Rumble on Friday, so stay tuned for that. I will be there for the review. It is a long, long show, but I'm very excited. I think it'll be better than Mania, honestly, so I'm excited for the wrestling return. And, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe to the Bottom Line View for more NFL and WWE content.